In this lecture, we're going to talk about the path of the sun as seen from somebody on the Earth, mainly in the northern hemisphere, but we'll also talk about uh, the path of the sun as seen in a few other places located on the surface of the Earth. This will prepare you for the path of the sun lecture tutorial in your lecture tutorial book. A lot of people think that the sun rises directly in the east and sets directly in the west, and that when it gets to its highest point in the sky on a particular day, it's directly overhead. But that doesn't occur for everybody on the earth on every day of the year. In fact, for you, somebody who is probably living in the continental US, the sun will never get directly overhead. And that has to do with how the sun's path takes it into the sky during the course of uh, nearly any day of the year for you. When the sun rises and when it sets depends on uh, the time of the year and your location on the earth. Also, how long it spends above the horizon is not always the same. So, I have listed here for different seasons during the year approximately how many hours the sun will spend above the horizon. In the winter it will be less than 12 hours. In the spring, just about 12 hours. In the summer, more than 12 hours. And in the fall, about 12 hours again. How do we know whether the sun will spend more, less, or about 12 hours? above the horizon. One of the things that we saw before is that for an object in the sky, if its path is mostly above the horizon and uh, with less of its path below the horizon, then it will spend more than 12 hours above the horizon. And if the path is above the horizon for half of its, half of its apparent motion, then it will spend about 12 hours. Let me show you what this uh, looks like for somebody in the continental US. This figure comes directly from the uh, Path of the Sun lecture tutorial. It's a horizon diagram showing the cardinal directions north, south, east, and west. A person standing outside with the dome of the sky above them. And we have the paths of the sun on two different days of the year. The lightly dashed lines are into the screen or into the paper, and the bold lines are out of the screen or out of the paper. Look at the path of the sun on June 21st. That's the summer solstice. That is the day of the year where you, where you will have the uh, greatest number of hours of daylight, so the sun will spend the most amount of time above the horizon on that day take a look at where the sun rises and I will point to it at the same time. I'm moving my cursor over the sun at sunrise on June 21st. It's on the lightly dashed line which means it's into the screen. It's on the eastern horizon but it's north of east. So the sun on June 21st rises north of east. And when it sets it will set uh, south, I'm sorry, it will set north of west. When it gets to its highest point in the sky, notice that the sun is above the southern horizon and not directly overhead. On the winter solstice, December 21st, the sun's path takes it so that it rises south of east, gets high in the southern sky, and then sets south of west it will spend less than 12 hours above the horizon on this day. Every other day of the year, the sun's path will take it somewhere on the eastern horizon to high in the southern sky and then set somewhere on the western horizon. Those paths will always be somewhere between the summer solstice path and the winter solstice path. The paths for the sun on either of the equinoxes, the fall equinox or the spring equinox, that's when the sun will rise directly east, but still go up and to the right, get high in the southern sky, and then set directly in the west. 
On those days, the sun will spend exactly 12 hours above the horizon. On no day of the year, for a person standing in the northern hemisphere, I'm sorry, for a person standing in the continental U.S., will the sun ever get directly overhead. What about for other places on the Earth? Let me show you a simulation. This comes from the uh, University of Nebraska simulations. We have a celestial sphere with a person marked out in a horizon diagram. I can rotate this celestial sphere around, north, south, east, and west. The blue line is the axis of the Earth. So there's the north celestial pole that I'm pointing at right now. The south celestial pole is also here. And the red lines mark out the summer solstice, equinox, and winter solstice paths for the sun on the celestial sphere. So for this person, who I've marked at 41 degrees north, which is the same latitude as our school, this person has the summer solstice path, just as I described before, rising somewhere in the northeast, high, getting high in the southern sky, and then setting in the northwest. The equinox path rises directly east, gets high in the southern sky, sets directly west, and the winter solstice path rises south of east, gets highest on that day, uh, uh, just above south, and then sets somewhere on the southwestern horizon. But what about for somebody else on the Earth? Well, let me go to uh, the opposite. Let's go to 41 degrees, 41 degrees south. This is a person in the southern hemisphere. Notice how for this person, the northern celestial pole is no longer in their sky, but the south celestial pole is. And that the paths of the sun for a person on this day will take them to the opposite part of the sky. Instead of getting to its highest point above the southern horizon, for a person south of the equator, the sun will get to, will get to its highest point in the northern sky, above the northern horizon. The sun will still rise north of east and set south of west, but uh, it will get to its highest point above the northern horizon. And so for this person, the equinoxes still rise directly in the east, set directly in the west, but on this day, uh, on these days, on the equinoxes, the sun would get to its highest point in the north. That's very peculiar for somebody who lives in the northern hemisphere. You might not expect that. What about for somebody who lives at the equator? Well, in this case, if you live at the equator, and I'll try to get as close to zero as possible, for somebody who lives at the equator, it is possible for the sun to get directly overhead, and that occurs on either of the equinoxes. But the summer solstice still rises north of east and sets north of west, and the winter solstice still rises uh, uh, on the winter solstice, the sun will still rise south of east and then set south of west. On either of those days, the sun will not get directly overhead. Remember, for somebody at the equator, that only occurs on one of the equinoxes. If you live somewhere between uh, the equator and one of the tropic lines on the globe, so all the way up to 23 degrees north or 23 degrees south latitude, then somewhere and at some time during the year, you would be able to get the sun directly overhead. When does that happen? Well, it sort of depends on what day of the year. So for a person, say, at 17 degrees north, you may have to wait for a particular day of the year that's sometime between the equinox and the summer solstice for the sun to have a path that takes it to the zenith. But if you are north of 23 degrees, let's say 30 degrees north, then no path will get to zenith, although the summer solstice path will get very close to it. Okay, so that's what it's like for uh, people on different locations on the Earth and uh, what the paths of the sun is like.
Here is sunrise on three different days of the year for here in uh, New York. I used the Stellarium program to simulate the sky on these three different days and then I overlaid the three images. So on the summer solstice, the sun will rise north of east. On the equinoxes, the sun will rise east. And then on the uh, winter solstice, the sun will rise south of east. And each day in between those uh, days of the year, the sun will incrementally move uh, when it rises to a different location on the horizon. So um, it's hard to notice that in a one particular day, but if you were to look at where sunrise is over the course of the year, you would notice this. So there's sunrise on June 21st, sunrise on September, September 21st and March 21st, and then again, sunrise on December 21st. Another aspect of all of this that can help you uh, understand where the sun is at in the sky without a lot of fancy tools is to use the shadows of upright sticks on the surface of the earth. People have been doing this for thousands of years and what you can do is uh, interpret and make shadow plots based on the shadow that's cast by the, from the sunlight uh, using an upright stick. So on a clear day, sunlight will cause an upright stick to have a shadow. The higher the sun is, the shorter that shadow will be. The lower the sun is in the sky, the longer the shadow will be. The shadow is always in the opposite direction of where the sun at is in the sky. So therefore, for example, if the sun is high in the southern sky, then the shadow will point north. This diagram comes from the Path of the Sun lecture tutorial, and you'll be working with uh, these shadow plots. There's two of them in this plot, shadow plot A and shadow plot B. Let me give you some explanation for what these uh, things mean. So in both shadow plots, there are X's that are marked along dashed lines. The dashed line is the entire path of the tip of the shadow over the course of that particular day. So for shadow plot A, that particular day is marked with these X's that I'm outlining with my cursor. And then shadow plot B is marked with these X's that I'm now outlining again. The X represents the end of the stick, or I'm sorry, the end of the stick's shadow at a particular time. And for the purposes of the activity that you'll be doing, you can assume that the amount of time between each X is two hours. So just a couple of hours in between. Notice what's happening here. I'll give you a little bit of a hint, but I won't give everything away before you get into this tutorial. If I've got uh, X's that are on this north-south line, let's see if uh, I can explain to you where the sun would be at in order to give me these two X's on these two different days of the year. For shadow plot A, the X represents the tip of a shadow from the stick and that shadow is pointing north, which means the sun had to be directly south in order to make that shadow. For shadow plot B, we'd have a similar situation. That X is also pointing north and so that shadow is pointing in the northern direction, which means the sun is uh, in the south. Which of these X's corresponds to a sun that is higher in the sky? Well, remember from before, the sun casts a shorter shadow when it is higher in the sky and a longer shadow when it is lower in the sky. So therefore, the shadow that is, has an X that is closer to the stick would be a shorter shadow, and that means the sun was higher in the sky when it got to that point during the day. So shadow plot B has, a, has an X on this north-south line corresponding to uh, a sun position that was higher in the sky. And as it turns out, the sun always gets to its highest point in the sky somewhere 
above, uh, somewhere directly above south. So that's how you can use the shadow plot to help interpret where the sun is at during the course of the day. The shape of a shadow plot depends on uh, where it rises and where it sets, and so that will depend on what time of the year it is. In the tutorial, you'll be figuring out what time of the year corresponds to shadow plot A and what time of the year corresponds to shadow plot B.